Today I've decided to talk about the lowercase letter, Greek letter gamma, which is the symbol for a photon. So, Lawrence, gam a gamma, I understand, is the symbol for a photon. Is it? I, d <laughs> I, d I didn't know that. <laughs> so, this is a difficult one because this is actually sort of intersects with quantum mechanics in that uh, th there is this strange property of matter that sometimes it behaves like a wave, sometimes it behaves like a particle. A photon is uh, a quantum of electromagnetic radiation, or if you like, a quantum of light. So it, in the usual wave theory of light, we think of light as being electromagnetic waves propagating through space. They can propagate through a vacuum. A photon is a little packet of light energy. With the advent of quantum mechanics, we also know now that the energy in, in light waves it, uh, comes in little bundles. So, to me, a photon is something like a, a little cricket ball with a, with a bit of momentum, a tiny amount of momentum and a tiny amount of energy. And uh, the momentum that it carries is given by Planck's constant divided by the wavelength of the light. Astronomers sort of use both. Sometimes we think about light as a wave, sometimes we think about it as a particle. So the, the detectors we use, for example, in the backs of telescopes, these little things called CCDs, which are the same as you know, in the camera that's pointing at me at the moment, um, the technology they use entirely relies on detecting individual photons. An individual photon arrives and gets recorded by that detector. So every time you're hit, hit uh, by a photon, it's just like taking a hit with a tiny, tiny quantum cricket ball. Now, the momentum of one pho photon is extremely small, so we just don't notice it. And if we're standing out in sunlight, it's hitting us in nearly all directions. But you can actually exploit uh, the momentum of each individual photon, uh, for example, in space travel. So you could imagine uh, having a spacecraft uh, near a star, and then if you put up a great big uh, sail, a big area sail that can catch the photons or even get the photons to bounce off in reflection, the momentum of those photons uh, can then uh, accelerate the, 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 uh, the spacecraft without need of any rocket fuel. You can just use, use the momentum of the photons coming from a nearby star. And if you wait long enough on a big enough sail, you can really get up to quite high speeds. Well, we do look at big, huge things really far in the distant universe, but the only thing that we can really detect from those distant galaxies is the light that comes from the stars. And that light is actually in the form of photons of different energy. So when the photons reach our telescope and happen to land on them, then we can turn that into a signal and an image of what the galaxy looks like. One of the things that astronomy, that, that's sometimes useful to think about is people think about wave packets. So you think about a photon as kind of a little packet of waves all going along together. Um, and that's kind of a, a slightly uneasy compromise between these ideas of thinking about light as a wave and thinking about it as a particle. Um, but it is, it's again not capturing the whole essence of the thing. It really is, the, the reality is it's some complicated mixture of the two that you really can't describe in such simple terms. Uh, when, uh, the, uh, say, a nucleus takes a hit from uh, a, uh, a, a photon, it recoils because of the momentum that the photon has delivered, just as if you were hit by a fast cricket ball, you would take a hit and bounce backwards. And for the Americans who may watch this, it's, a cricket ball is a bit like a baseball. It's hard and heavy, and it hurts when you hit you, hits you. And so an energetic photon can give a hit to a, to a, to a proton. Well, it's nice to know that photons come from very distant galaxies, but we also have reason to study photons on Earth. The only reason we can see is because photons are received on our eyeballs and we can interpret those as different images. And also we receive photons from the sun. So the only reason that we have light during the day is because photons from the sun scatter around in the atmosphere and come down to, to brighten everything up. Do you see them as little bits, as tiny balls, or do you see them as waves? Which, which is it in your, in your head? I suppose professional physicists are taught and it's ingrained in them to think of it in both ways, to think of it in terms of wave-particle duality. So, uh, I mean, they're, they're very everyday objects. I mean, we, 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 we experience light all the time, but they have these mysterious quantum properties as well. In places outside of England, it's often that the sky is blue. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, okay. I'll take your word for it. Okay. A few days during the year in England, the sky is blue, 
And we can understand why the sky is blue because of the way that photons from the sun interact with our atmosphere. So photons from the sun come from many different energies, and some of those are actually scattered off of all the particles that are in the atmosphere. So the scattering depends on the wavelength of the photon and the size of the actual particle that's in the atmosphere. So most of the stuff in our atmosphere is oxygen or nitrogen, and there's some other stuff too, but let's say we've got an oxygen particle right here, and we have some sort of red light from the sun coming through, traveling with a really long wavelength. It's essentially gonna go right over that particle. Whereas if we have blue light that's traveling with a very short wavelength, then it's most likely gonna bump into that particle and get shot off, scattered in any direction. So if the blue light is being affected and bouncing every which way, why, why isn't less blue making it down to Earth and hitting my eyes and the sky appears unblue? <laughs> well, since the blue light is scattered in every direction, then you've got blue light coming from every direction, whereas you've got a collection of all the other types of light that come to your eye. So you only actually see the blue light in that case, which is why the, the sky is blue. The path that the sunlight comes through during the day is the shortest path that it can come through the atmosphere when it's directly over your head. So in the evening, if the sun is way over in the west and it comes from here, then it goes through a longer path in the atmosphere. So more photons get scattered and more photons get scattered. So all the blue photons get scattered and then the yellow and then the green. So the only ones that are actually left to get to you are the red and the orange. So the last ones that scatter and the ones that actually reach your eye are the blue or the orange and the red when the sun sets. So that's why we have red and orange sunsets. Now if we didn't have any atmosphere, the sky would be completely black, just like space. Just when astronauts go up, they see a black, a black space around them. They don't see a blue sky or an orange sunset. But we can do a very nice experiment to demonstrate why the sky is blue. Show me this flashy setup then. <laughs> All right. <laughs> So this is our fancy setup to simulate why the sky is blue and the sunsets are red and orange. Here we have some water with some, some stuff in it to simulate the particles that are in our atmosphere. And we've got a flashlight that comes from the bottom, which simulates the sun coming from a distance. For, for those English speakers, flashlight is a torch. Oh, that's right. <laughs> I knew I was going to forget that one. So the sun enters our atmosphere, and we see that some of the wavelengths are scattered. So the shorter wavelengths are scattered more efficiently and we see those as blue here. So you see kind of a blue glow in the same way that you see a, the blue sky during the day. Now, if we think of when the sun goes through more and more of the atmosphere, so if the sun, if this is the Earth and the sun shines down straight to us, it only goes through a little bit of atmosphere at noon during the day, but as the sun sets, it starts to go through a lot more of the atmosphere to reach us here. So as we go through more and more atmosphere, we're scattering more and more of those short wavelength blue photons so that what we're left with is actually the longer wavelength orange and red photons. So when the, when the sun sets, the sky looks like this part up here where we have a really bright orange light and no more blue.